G'day fellas. Welcome to a guide on Japanese in team games. Had a lot of people asking me saying, Drongo, show us what your team games are made of. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be talking about team games for the Japanese. So we're going to start with some deck building. If you don't want to see the deck building, that's okay. Skip ahead in the video. I've put a little thing down in the description that tells you when we do and don't have uh, the decks and when the game starts. So let's get to it. Age one, what are you going to want to be sending? Definitely Heavenly Harmony. Now, this can change depending on whether it's a water map, whether it's a land map, what your role is. Uh, that's going to be a big thing. The next one is Team Chenindo. Uh, really big card, really important. So that's going to be your first two cards. Uh, those are kind of mandatory. The next one's four vills, 600 wood. Really also important. Now, when it comes to team games, you need to keep in mind what you're going to be doing in team games uh, is based on your composition. So if you've got a Swedish player on your team, you probably want to be making like the... Well, Sweden's probably a bad example. Let's say you've got a United States player on, on your team and they're making state militia. You don't want to be making Yumi as well. You want to be mixing it up. You want to be like making Ashigaru or you want to be making Yabusami. So we're going to make sure that we've got all of our upgrades in the deck just for both of those. Uh, we're also going to be including some eco cards as well as our 300 export. Very important. Now, in one versus one, you put cherry orchards in your deck. I don't believe in this in in team games. And the reason why is because it's much better to just go a flooded parcel. This gives you the rice paddy rickshaw and it gives you a, a gathering bonus for the rest of the game. So you're basically taking 10 villages and putting them on a rice paddy permanently. It's basically occupying 10 villages over there uh, permanently. So then from there, you, there's other options. You can go sustainable agriculture. You can go cigar roller. It's up to you how you want to play it. Now we go to the fortress age. So same thing there. It's all about economy cards in team games. All about economy cards. That's really what you want to focus on uh, and also focusing on your upgrades as well. So Naganata Rider hit points, a really big upgrade. Yabusami Archer attack. Uh, Yabusamis are quite strong. I used to underrate these guys quite a lot, but uh, I tell you what, they're, uh, they're very potent. Now, in team games, you want to avoid making melee units for the most part. You want to kind of stick to ranged units just because of the way the game flows. There's going to be a lot of trees around. You want to do your best to avoid having terrible pathing. Uh, and so you, you want to try and stick to ranged units. So whether that means... Now, we've got Nagi health in there. So we could do a big Nagi switch where we make 30, 35 Nagis. Uh, but it's, it, there's, you know, it's, uh, there's a low chance of that happening. Now, in addition to that, uh, we're also going to put in a couple cards for the fourth age. So we're going to include things like Flaming Arrows as well as Flaming Arrows in the second age as well. Uh, and now there's two cards for the Yabusami that we can include here. Yabusami Attack... Uh, I think there's also another one here as well. Uh, so this also increases um, Yabusami attack by 20%. So we can include that. So we can have like double upgrades for Yabusami if we want to be making those. Really, really good units as well. So And they're kind of dependent on on you as a player and whether you're able to control them well because they, they are uh, really potent. So now we're going to include um, 9 Yumi as well. So basically the, the thought behind the 9 Yumi card is if your opponent's pushing in, you know, you've, you've just hit the age up. You don't really have a big mass. Then you can send nine Yumi instead of sending Flaming Arrow, something like that. Uh, and other than that, I think that like this deck looks pretty reasonable. Um, there's a couple uh, other options. What I might do is I'm just going to put a second deck in just so that I can flesh it out and have a look uh, what it looks like. So probably could even like get rid of the Ashigaru Musketeers uh, in the second age. I, I just, you know, you're probably not going to be sending them. You're going to be sending Yumi's definitely. Uh, so we might get rid of the Ashigaris and we're going to put in 600 coin instead. So that is what we're going to be doing. Uh, and we'll also be... Yeah, I mean, other than that, it looks relatively good. A lot of economy upgrades here. Now, keep in mind, 2 versus 2 and 3v3 is a little bit different. Uh, so this is kind of more towards a 3 versus 3 game. Uh, but we're going to be aiming to carry our team with... Um, so I'm even going to get rid of Ashigaru uh, Musketeer Attack. We're going to aim to carry them with Yumi's. And with Yabusamis. That's going to be our game plan. We're going to try and do our best to do that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put Ashigaru attack just back in the deck, just in case, because we do like to make lots of Ashigaru. Uh, now, other than this, I think it is... Is it this card here? I want something that is going to mean that I can make a lot of shit. Hold on. Japanese leadership enables all military units to be trained more quickly. That is exactly what I want. Uh, okay, cool. Is there anything... In chat, anybody in chat who thinks I'm missing something from this deck? I think that this actually looks pretty good. Uh, so obviously we've got one card left that we can go. So we can go in age one or we can go in age four. Um, but other than that, I think that's pretty much it. I can't really see anything else here in age one that we'd want to include. Maybe like something like this, reclaimed land. Or you could even go like rum distillery. Um... Lemmings in the chat saying the Flaming Arrow upgrade in Age 4. 
That's not a bad upgrade. That's a pretty good upgrade. Good suggestion, Lemmings. Thank you very much. All right, so that's going to be our land deck. Now for water. Now, I'm, I'm not going to be overly serious when it comes to water. I'm not going to do like a big boy water boom, like Kinesi style or something where I send East India Man and I send whale oil and all that stuff because you can really go ham with the Japanese. At, at most, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a water deck. I'm just going to put a few cards in there just in case my opponent looks like they're going to be, you know, playing on water. So things like uh, we might take Cigar Roller out of this. Oh, it's kind of dangerous, to, dangerous taking Cigar Roller out. Uh, do I take it out? Yeah, all right. I'll take it out. I'll take out Cigar Roller um, and we'll put in... So we can go like two Funes or we can put in an Age 3 card. Uh, but I think we just might put in two Funes just to kind of, uh, you know, prevent the opponent from uh, booming freely. We ju Just in case we want to shut it down. We've got Afroholic in the chat saying Cherry Orchid needed so badly. Uh, so we're actually not going for Cherry Orchid. The idea is that we go for Flooded Parcel instead of Cherry Orchids. Uh, and that's going to get us on to Rice Paddies sooner. It's going to increase the base gather rate for Rice Paddies as well. And then if we're staying in the second age, we can always send Sustainable Agriculture as well, which is going to further pump that up as well. So that's that's really the difference. It's just going to be that one card. Um, so we're we're essentially focusing on that. And so we've got 2v2 and 3v3 selected. I'm just going to go to uh, 3v3 and we'll see how long. Now, I'm not queuing up with any teammates. Uh, there's probably going to be a cut in the video right here. Welcome back. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that deck making. Now we're going to jump into the game. So we're playing on the map Himalayas, which is a really good map for the Japanese. And the reason why it's great for the Japanese, the Japanese excel in the late game and the mid game. And on the Himalayas, typically your game is going to be going towards that stage. Just simply because it's very easy to wall on this map. Uh, and, and it promotes people going to the late game, playing greedy. Now, we're not going to be playing greedy in the early game. I mean, we're still going to be playing pretty greedy. Uh, but we're not going to be going super duper greedy crazy. Uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be focusing on our mass, making sure we get that out, making sure that we hit the 200 shrine population, and we're going to be doing the greediest build possible in team games. So that is, we're going to be sending in Heavenly Kami, then 600 wood, and then four vills, four vills back to back. And then that's going to rocket us ahead. We're going to open up with a Portuguese consulate, and then we're going to move into Isolationist. Uh, now we got a huge amount of berries here, so really nice start. Uh, the really, really good map for us. Alright, and now we're going to keep our explorers relatively close because we're going to need them to potentially fight treasures. Oh, hello! Beautiful treasure start right there for us. So we're just going to shoot these down together. I think they might even be stuck in there. Let's get you around here. Take a look at what our allies are doing and what they're up to. We're going to drop down that uh, consulate. Stick it in the front of our base. Now we don't want to gather those. Now we can probably even drop down a market potentially here. We do have that 100 coin. So let's take our, or take our deck. So we're going to take the land deck here. So we picked up a really good treasure in the early game as the Japanese. Uh, we're going to be uh, really focusing on getting wood treasures and food treasures. Uh, strat. Um, let's have a look. Let's see. Uh, state militia. Oh, this isn't the best. Oh gosh, we, we're like three civs that love to make light infantry, so it's uh, it's a little bit tough. Maybe I have to like, I can make the Ashigaru. What do we got here? A family of caged monkeys. Not the best. Watching shit. He said. Uh, we got Portuguese out. Oh fuck, Portuguese. We're just going to chuck a shrine over here. It's going to be a bit tight. Probably going to be idle here for a little bit. Um, so we're going to do that. Now, we're going to keep scouting out with this just behind the base. Uh, shit, there we go. All right, so we're probably going to idle right here. We didn't have this being built fast enough. That's okay. That's all right. Idling just for a little bit. It, it, idling isn't the worst with the Japanese. Oh, God, this is a, ter this is a terrible idol. Don't do this. If, you, if you're watching this at home, don't do this. Uh, <laughs> not not the best. Now, the reason why idling with Japan isn't a bad thing or isn't a terrible... Oh, hello. Uh, isn't a terrible thing? Oh, hello. Is because you can make villages during transition. That's why. Uh, and so it, it doesn't hurt you a huge amount. So we've got two really nice treasures down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my explorers tactically. I go Cav says censure. He's the Russian player. Great. Okay. So I'm going to pull that. So we're going to bring it out to the edge of the map or out to the ring, the invisible ring, which is about here. Like that. And we're going to shoot that guy. And then we're just going to do that. We can Now we can actually shoot this guy as well. Plop. 
Like that. Got the divine strike. Now keep in mind, because we've got the Portuguese consulate, we only need 680. So now, because we've only used one of our stuns, we can go down and take this treasure without having to wait. Look at the stun, how long it's on cooldown. If you stun both of those, it would have taken a lot, quite a lot of time. Uh, so let's get down here. We picked up that treasure, so we're going to go to Shogu Shrine. We're going to drop it right down here in amongst this hunt. Now we're just going to tank it. Uh, we were going to tank that. There we go. All right, now moving everybody across. So just keeping six on food in the transition. One or, or everybody else on wood. Now we can move more fills down here, but it's not necessary. We don't have to. Now we've done a nice bit of exploring at the back with our cherry orchid. We're going to bring it back eventually. We're going to spread out our fills on these as well. We'll drop down a shrine over here. Uh, so we'll poof back to base and then we're going to head back. We're going to head over here. Now, we can go for Tim, uh, Team Chenindo nice and early, but it's going to take a while for it to pay off. So we're going to send it after we do our upgrades. Uh, so uh, after we do our 4 vil 4 vil. Okay, so that's where we're going to be FBing. I can agree with that. I'm going to drop down another meat here. So I'm going to avoid shrining my opponent's stuff, or my ally's stuff rather. Uh, let's pick up that coin. Actually, let's send these two vills forward. Actually, we might only just send one vill forward. I think that's probably necessary. Uh, normally, you'd go to... and we, Our opponent is taking a trading post nice and early. Probably going for Chinese immigrants. That's probably why. So, let's keep moving out over here. More vills are being trained. Now, I could probably drop a, uh, a shrine here. Where's that FB going? I could shrine up his hunts, but I'm not an asshole. Now, keep in mind, we're playing really, really greedy here. Uh, let's let's actually shrine this. Alright, that's popped. Oh, so many nice things. So, 600 wood, first card being sent from the home city. Uh, hopefully, this is going to attract all of these. That's why we put it down here so close to the edge of the map. Now, I could be dropping down a Rax at this point. It's only five minutes. And on team games, teams, things like typically go a little bit slower. So we're going to actually wait for our... Um, oh, shit. Oh, those are the thuggies. Okay, never mind. We're okay. Now, um, I, I might just drop it down straight away so that the barracks coming down. So we're just going to be going for Yumi's. I think it's probably the best bet. And now four Vils coming in behind that as well. Now, uh, this guy is coming back to our base almost perfectly. So we're going to chuck that behind our base, but we're not going to use it just yet. Our explorer up here doing a whole bunch of great shrining. Uh, that 600 wood has come in, so we're going to use these villagers here to gather it. That one there. Why aren't my team aging up? Help. Yeah, that can be a problem. Uh, so we're at six minutes and the opponent is only just aging up now. So uh, th this guide might be a little bit shorter than your typical guide. Uh, so now we've got this in the middle. So I'm going to keep shrining up this stuff. Uh, okay, he, he's actually doing a pretty good job. Like, he's already got stuff out. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I love that he's the only one making units. Alright, and so we're going to switch the shrines over now to food. Just because we, we need to start making... Uh, we need we need some food to come in because we've got units on the front line. I don't think we're going to get a batch out. Do we get a batch? We get a batch of five. So we're going a little bit idle here. So we're just going to use this to defend our forward base. Now I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to shrine my own hunts. I'm going to put a villager in queue as well. And I'm just going to keep massing up Yumi at this point. So we've got State Militia, Yumi, and Strellas. I thought you were going to go Cav. Didn't you say you're going Cav, John? What is this? Well, we're going to attack now, apparently. Uh, sending in four vills again behind this. And this is just like your pretty much pretty standard opening. Uh, so we'll go shrine our opponent's hunts as well. So you can really see just the amount of shrines that we're putting down now. Uh, that's actually max shrines right there. Okay, and so I'm going to switch this back to wood. Alright, we're attacking. Don't worry, my friend. So we want to drop down another Rax. So we're going to drop down that second Rax now. And now we're going to switch off um, Portuguese after we change over. Uh, 
So just being really careful with our units. We don't want to make sure that we don't lose any units. Don't worry, I'm attacking, bro. I'm attacking. So we're going to drop down a market now as well. And our market is going to continue kickstarting our economy. Uh, we, we're max shrines at this point. Got both of our raxes up. Alright, and from here we get all of our market ups. Just try and forget, or just try and avoid going idle. And one of the great things about Japan is that macro is very easy. Uh, and the reason why macro is really easy is you can just change your shrine over. So if you start collecting too much uh, wood, very, very simple. You're just going to change it back over to food at this point. Oh, bit of lag here, bit of lag. All right, we're okay. That was me. That was actually me. Hopefully we're back. Hopefully we're back. Uh, and then from here, so I can send Team Chinindo or I can send Yumi attack. I'm going to go with Team Chinindo. Going to help my team out just a little bit more. And see, now you can see that my mass is, is uh, beginning to build up. Taking out the opponent's infantry. Unfortunately, it looks like we've only got one opponent at this stage. Uh, not sure exactly. Oh, Artillery Foundry going down for the enemy Russian player. Uh, GG being called. Just do it. Hitting the Fortress Age and then resigning. Uh, the enemy Russian player just not sure exactly what he was going for. Uh, but... Uh, uh, two of our opponents now going out. So that's essentially the, the opening build order. That's the way that you want to play it in team games. Uh, from here, you would transition into a number of different things. So you could go um, and you could continue doing this uh, age two play, which is in incredibly strong Japan in age two. So you can see just the, the economy that we've got behind this. So I, I'm double raxing at this point very effectively uh, and, and training villagers, making sure that I get my upgrades as well. So I can change my uh, income into coin now. I can send 600 coin and go for the thir third age, or I can just send Yumi attack, which I think is normally the best bet. If you go for Yumi attack, you want to try and get your upgrades in as quickly as possible. Uh, so our only opponent now is the purple guy. So we're going to go deal with him. We've got 38 Yumi at 10 minutes. So not a bad mass. Uh, and we can uh, just continue making Yumi at this point and really just massing Yumi. In team games especially, you want to just be making light infantry. A lot of light infantry and dragoons typically uh, is, is what you want to be making. So you can see that our opponent's making some hussars here. It's normally not the best to be doing that just because the, the masses are a lot larger. It's going to take longer for, for things to, uh, to connect with each other. And so getting out that nice big batch, we'll switch over to the individual consulate. And so now 48. Uh, so we've got... All right, I'm attacking. Ah, uh, we got seven idols, apparently. They, uh... I don't know exactly why they're going idle. They're, it's not like there's a shortage of trees around. Uh, but, but speaking of coin, you can take a look at our coin income right now at this point, and we are just absolutely booming. Our opponent's got a, an arsenal, and they're playing... Is that British? Yeah, they're playing British. Uh, so the economy is in a great spot at the moment. We really want to try and hit all three of those upgrades. Um, the most important one being the Imperial bureaucra Bureaucracy Upgrade, which uh, I think it gives you 10% of everything. Let's double check. Yeah, 10% of everything. So an expensive upgrade, but nonetheless, a, a really good one. Uh, and uh, so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to avoid using up all of our Cherry Orchid because we've only got one Cherry Orchid that remains. So we're going to transition villages over to Coin, and then we're going to change our uh, income over to Food on Shrines because you got to remember that's infinite that, that's uh, in infinite resources that are coming in from the shrines. They just they get generated out of thin air. And then from here, we're, we're opting for an age up where we're looking to to get that age up in queue. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, we, we, we've got plenty of export down here that we can be using. And so going up to the third age, the most important one is going to be the golden pavilion. You want to be going up with the golden pavilion wherever you can to the third age. It's really going to help you out. And go up, you, make sure that you're using all three or all eight villages to build your wonder. So meanwhile on the front line. Now, obviously when you're playing out a game and your opponent are actually, you know, responding to you, you're going to have to continue making units throughout this. You're not going to be able to have such a clean age up just the same way that I have uh, been able to do. But what I would be doing is I'd be looking to transition now so I could transition uh, my villagers over to a cherry orchid. And at the same time I can send... So let's say I, I stayed in age two, I could send flooded parcel as, as my, uh, in, instead of sending Cherry Orchid. So now we've got team improved hunting and gathering rates. Very nice. So we've got team Chinindo as well as the, 
Uh, oh, I, did, I missed my batch. That's okay. Uh, I missed the batch just there. Can always be tough timing the batches. It wouldn't have actually mattered just because we didn't have enough wood to finish our batch. I've switched our shrines over to wood now, so they're going to be doing absolute work. Keep in mind when you're placing your shrines, you want to be doing it on your opponent's hunts. So you can see how I've shrined on my opponent's side of the maps over here. I've avoided these hunts because my opponent is going to need these hunts. Uh, I've, I've taken the, these hunts down here to the south. Got some more units that we're trying to train out now. Let's go. Let's see. There we go. So we've got some more Yumi archers coming out. Uh, and now, when you're hitting the third age, most importantly, you want to be getting your upgrades as quickly as possible. Oh, this is our cherry orchid. I just realized. I, t I forgot that we canceled it. Oh, that we sent this. Uh, so you want to be getting your veterancy upgrades straight away. So discipline Yumi Archer come in straight away. Um, our, our opponent looks like they're going to be doing a little bit of uh, of playing hide the villagers. So we might opt. We, we might even go up for the Great Buddha. Um, get our upgrades. So we've hit the third age now, so we can get all those big upgrades. So we're getting our veterancy upgrade that's going to increase HP attack by 20%. Now, in addition to that, what we can also do is get our next upgrade for our Yumi Archers, which is Way of the Bow. That's going to increase the range of the Yumi, Yumi Archers. Now, keep in mind, you might uh, be having trouble with cavalry, and so you might be opting for something like, uh, instead of that, maybe going for Yabusami and then sending one of these. But because, you know, we're, we're massing Yumi Archers at the moment, we're just going to go Way of the Bow and use that. Uh, I see some purple vills down here. Yep, they've been spotted. Uh, let us get the remainder of our upgrades. Let's send these over here. Do we have any more idols? We've got a couple more idols over here. So I'm just finding all my idol military units. GG. Ah, GG. And there it is. So one of the other things that you can do once you reach the third age, so I was actually saving up resources to go to the fourth age, drop down some additional town centers as well. Uh, but that is, uh, that's my guide to Japanese team games. I hope that it has been encompassing. Uh, normally the composition that I would be going for in a team game like this would be Yabu Sami, as well as Yumi Archers. And I'm going to utilize those to try and carry my team. Uh, because the, the reason is that they are affected by the same upgrade from the Golden Pavilion. So they're affected by ranged attack. Whereas if you've got uh, Ashigaru, Ashigaru in melee aren't affected by it. Um, so that that is essentially the way I'm playing it. So we'll take a look. I've got zero rating for that game, unfortunately. So not against the best opponents. But I hope that this demonstration has been eye-opening for you. If you're wanting to play in team games, you can take a look at the villager population there. You can see nice and early we get those double back-to-back -back four villager shipments. We'll take a look at the resources gathered. And we're just miles ahead. And that's really the power of the build order and, and just the way that it works. You can see even though we've, you know, we've got four people in the game here, two of which were our teammates, and we're just absolutely miles ahead at the 10-minute mark or at... Not a lot of resources, so about 11k. And then by 20 minutes, or we're not even by 20 minutes, by 14 minutes, we're, we're double the resources. It just, it takes off very, very quickly. So that is your inside look at the Japanese in-team games.